I am prepping the surprise for John now for his present. Yeah, I'm gonna put it like that. I even got him a card. The cue for you to open is when you hear something. Okay? <laughs> Can you just give it to me? I can't. Person? Okay, you see here and wait. Ah. I open. Yeah. I like for you at the altar. Is it the exact replica? It is the exact. How? Jonathan, mm. I, Katrina, take you, Jonathan, to be my husband. I will love you and honor you all the days of her. <laughs> <laughs> can buy another two more? I, I, I <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> Okay, you cannot take it out now. He's married! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, white I do a white drama. <laughs> I have to be at my wedding day! Success! Wait, thank you. I was not very sure if Hawaii been uh, bone marrow, but she demolished it. La. <laughs> okay, good morning. We are gonna get a haircut. It's a rare Sunday. I get to spend with my wife. <laughs> and then today we wanna talk about, or rather, we wanna share the five most important things we learned in planning our wedding or while executing our wedding. Key decisions we made that we stand by, things that we did and perhaps regret. And things that definitely is applicable to the weddings that many of y'all are planning today. Hello, we are finally back. We wanted to do this out and about in different locations, but then we realized actually it's not into focus one because we need to recount. And so we wait till we come back to do it. Also, cause lazy lah. Okay, we are gonna start with talking about some of the milestones first okay. before we go into our five key takeaways. And the first one is. The cost. I think we were quite fair at splitting the cost. If I do pay for something that is big, right? Then I think we ought to split it lah. And yeah. I don't expect him to pay for the big items as well. So one of the big items was getting our wedding bands. Mm. Yeah, and I think we split the cost. We, we, we pull a bit of our money into this account and then we just took from that account. Lah. At least for me, what I got out of splitting down the middle, right? Um, as compared to my friends that get married when they are in a financially better place, I didn't receive any unreasonable requests from my wife, which is a very real thing eh? because when it comes down to it, I feel like there's a lot of bullshit. There's a lot of, hey, I don't want to remarry, eh? you are the one forever already. I'm going. This is my one time, the one day I get to walk down the aisle with you. So there's all that stuff going on, right? From the girl side lah, mostly lah. Oh, I'm not trying to be sexist here, but you know how it is. <laughs> ah. But from the guy side, right, it's also, it's true. I this is the, the day best. she's giving up everything and she's following me, she's joining my family, she's taking my last name and then I don't want to spend a couple thousand bucks more for her. You know, so when all that come into play, right, I think, wow, it was, I, I see my friends and, and it's very poor thing and it really look around like a, the guy feels like he has no choice, the girl feels like this is once in a lifetime. I mean, of course, the gender makes us I'll switch up sometimes, but uh, that was my experience of the people around me. And for me, splitting the cost right down the middle with Pat, right, it was always very clear what we can or cannot afford. We got like ice cream vendor. Ice cream vendor outside our after our church ceremony basically got a free like ultra roll one dollar ice cream, mm. right? So that kind of thing are really very bold. I don't know need or not, right? But because we are splitting half, it's actually not as expensive as I thought either. Yeah, and then you don't get those like, oh, maybe you ride a horse now, huh? you know, that kind of shit. I think from the girl's point of view, I do see why sometimes we ask for things out of the extraordinary, thinking that, you know, I pay ma, this is my right. How I see it is that, I don't want him to be broke after the wedding. Eh? Yeah. Like we are a team, and if I expect him to pay for everything, I also must be able to contribute somewhere else lah. Yeah. But if I'm just going into the marriage thinking that, hey, I have more free stuff now and I get mm. to keep my money, I think it's not fair. Only afford what you can lah. And I think the other thing we want to talk about before we drop our five tips was, was the dowry. I think the conversations with our parents regards to the dowry was very... With my parents' dowry only affect yeah, my yeah, parents. Yeah. No lah, because if you Indian then uh, you pay me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for the dowry, I think when the conversation was not hard to uh, approach to my parents because my sister actually sets the benchmark and I kind of know how much my sister gave. I was telling them that hey, you are not selling your daughter. Like after that, if you are asking for a very high dowry, are you saying that after that, I don't need to give you any allowance anymore? Because 
like the Chinese saying, right? You are the pour 出去的水 So is it once you pour water 出去 I give you this amount of money, you don't you don't come into my life? No, ma. You know. So so then they are the kind they know that I am very rebellious. So they like, ah, 随便你啦，随便你啦 So they very relaxed with me. I do think as much as I wish a pet carry this conversation a little bit more politely with a family, right? <laughs> I do feel like there's a lot of truth in this, and it's and it's something that's worth exploring, lah. Especially financially, you are not like haven't make it yet, right? I think it's important to know who's paying for the wedding and for both sides of the parents. To know who is paying for the wedding, I think it's very stressful, especially if you get married later and later in life, and your meet maybe one two years you'll get married. I think that one will present a whole new set of challenge that we have the privilege of skipping.、Mm. I think if you are twenty nine or you're thirty one, you meet a guy one year later, you tell your mom I'm gonna get married. You know your mom's gonna be like, okay, good for you. Yeah, so this guy better have money now. He's thirty one, right? But for Pat and I, I think we had the privilege of meeting each other's parents when we were like eighteen. So from no job to still studying to have part time job in that process, everybody always kind of knew, oh, we still saving, we still saving, we still saving, we still saving. And so we had the privilege of that lah. And I think that then leads down to should we give the table ang pao to the parents? Wow. Because my sister got married first, my brother in law's parent was kind enough to say that. Hey, we need to do this tradition. My brother-in-law gave my mom two tables, and it's not just paying for the table and say, "Hey, this is for your guests." It also means that my parents gets to keep the ang pao from that two table. They what they will do is they will go and tell their relative before the wedding that. If you don't put the money, don't put the ang pao in the ang pao box, ah,、uh, you pass to me.、Yeah. And I always find it very ugly, lah. Like when、yeah. I go to some wedding, not not that it's wrong. That they will split the angpao box, and then they will ask you, "Hello, you're from which side?" For the split box one, my understanding is this: that both side family, right, yeah, has come in to split the cost of the wedding. Ah. So my family give my angpao. I don't want to subsidize you, ma. Correct. I correct, will correct, RI correct. on my banquet.、Ah. Then you will RI on your banquet if your relatives are cheap. Oh. But this is when both parents are involved, and basically angpao goes to them. Yeah. So the angpao goes to them. The parents will break even, and then they will decide. Okay, now I will give the couple. Five k, you know, yeah. If, if your parents are paying for your wedding, go on you, man. Go on you, you really. Y'all don't、yet. know how big a privilege that is. Okay. <laughs> Adding to the point of the dowry, right? I think it's worthwhile having that conversation with with your parents, both sides. Ah, so you must represent your own. Go and talk to your own parents, and then the other side to go and also talk to your parent on what do we expect out of this dowry? Does it mean that if if you fall sick? Is your son's problem, not your daughter's problem anymore? Because the daughter is married out. Because essentially that's what that is, right? And if it's not, I think I think make it very clear that this dowry is a very very outdated tradition. Because in the past, the women will leave their village to go to the guy's village, and then if your mother falls sick, I don't know, cause got no telephone, right? It's not like that anymore. So it's worthwhile, I think, reminding your parents that. I remember that right when I was talking to my parents about the dowry of how. Uh, it's going to be this amount, and it will be coming out from our pockets. I remember my dad or my mom saying, "No, the dowry should be from the guy side's parents."、Mm. But I feel that maybe at that point, nobody, maybe our parents wouldn't have talked to each other about their finances, and only we know, la, ma,、yeah. and only we know.、Yeah. So that's why you have to be the first line of defense. To either help your boyfriend or girlfriend's、uh, boyfriend's family lah、yeah. to understand that what is their family situation like,、yeah. like. Like at the at the end, I will explain why we are paying it, and I say that I don't expect his parents to pay the dowry lah. Like、yeah. why? Why should they? They are already buying me like the sixty. And my parents and didn't choose for me to marry you, eh? Yeah. Hey, but the thing is, yeah, his parents、know. never reject ah. Yeah. His parents were fine and often said that of course we have to give. Yeah, but but on that note, I choose my own girlfriend ma. Then one day my parents will guess get the same surprise that her parents get. Oh, I got the friend already, you know. Ah, you need to pay this money. Now that suddenly you all have more money, eh? Shall we? So now is our five main takeaways. Not just learn from planning our weddings, okay?、Mm. From being groomsmen, from being bridesmaid, from being AV, from being their main coordinator. Attending being, many, many weddings. Yeah, going for like five hundred weddings. <laughs> Ah,、uh, and pay so much on pals, right? This is our five key things that hopefully not just applies to our wedding. But y'all can take away also, and I want to say ah,、uh, a lot of our advice right comes from the fact that don't spend so much money on your wedding lah. But if you are very rich right, good. then go ahead. Good for you. This is completely irrelevant. This is broke people's. No, I think. Can you? Yeah. Can you imagine if we get married today? Can you imagine how much 
dowry your mother will demand of me. A lot. We will be very frivolous in spending also. Yeah. And then realize at the end, later I'll tell you my conclusion about our wedding. So the first piece of advice we want to give y'all is, is to budget as a couple. Mm. Without knowing anything, uh, decide how y'all will split the cost. Mm. And then write down the line item. The line mm. item, okay? So banquet how much? The church, how much? Photography, videography, what or not? Um, Pre-wet shoot. The shoot, the gown, all that, the suit. Okay, so write down that budget in a, in, in a table. And then together, right, guesstimate and bomb the price together. I mean, you can have your laptop beside you to, to reference some research. And then write down that number. See the total amount and know that the both of y'all are going to find a way to split this amount. And don't think about whether you will earn it back. Think about if you can lose this entirely yeah, yeah, yeah. and still afford to live life. And I can tell you the first time you look at the bottom of this number, right? You're gonna tell yourself, Ha! Huh? How are we gonna afford this wedding? 100%! 100%! And that's a good thing, okay? Remember that feeling and then you all will shake hands to keep within the budget. Okay? Poisonous and very toxic is that you're going to spend this money, right? Along the way. Look at this budget and agree to stick by the budget. Because I tell you, it's endless one. My richer friends, their wedding, they can spend $20,000 on balloon. But I, it didn't even cross my mind to, to, to buy for what? But who won the balloon? After that, you burst. <laughs> yeah, then after that, at night, your hot drive around, pop, 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 pop. Or like llama. You go overseas, suddenly on the light item at the hotel will give you one llama that will walk the f ring to you. For f you need a llama, you pay two grand to rent a llama. Okay, okay, but, but I feel that as girls, I also see the point why. Because it's once in a lifetime and you're doing it honestly for the pictures lah. Because all these will look very nice on the pictures. By budgeting it, you will know whether you can even afford to put it on the pictures. If not, find substitute mm. or find other things to, to put there lah, you know. So with the budget, you can then decide the size of your wedding banquet. And number two is guest list. So if you work backwards, right, you will know how many people you can afford. And instead of inviting the whole village, you should only invite people that are close to you. Lah. So for the both of us, we look through our contacts and then we stare at the name and be like, have we spoken in the past year? If we have not, then most probably we shouldn't invite this mm. person. Like, I mean, I'm sure the person will feel happy, but you don't want to transfer the pressure over to this person and be like, yeah. wow, one year never see you already. Then when they talk to me, it's invite me to a wedding. We've been to a lot of weddings whereby a lot of people were invited for the sake of tradition. Like people with major family trees, mm. where like half the room is your auntie, uncle, grandmother, and your grandmother's siblings. They're kind of like, you never see before. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's a lot of like Chinese tradition that goes with this whole thing. And I think if you can afford it and if the venue support it, okay. Mm. But here's our two cents. When the people present at your wedding don't actually want to see or get married, they're not cheeky and excited about watching your march down and like have that kiss or you know like even see you cut the cake then they feel like oh my god they're cutting the cake they're so cute you know when you have a lot of people that show up out of obligation right the whole wedding atmosphere are super sian one mm. it's quiet at the times when it needs to be noisy mm. it's extremely noisy when the bride is there thank you mommy right then behind yeah got like four uncles that you only see one and then they decide to yam sing then at that moment. I had a rule for in terms of my relatives, especially because I have a major family tree, is that if I don't have your number or I don't remember telling my mom, hey, do you have this person's number? Because I want this person. I want to invite this person. Then I did not invite that person to the wedding. But I must also say that we are very privileged that we are the second or last child to be mm. married in the family. Correct. My parents and their parents already invited whoever mm. they want to their favorite the butcher la, you know, the neighbor's dog off. The colleague la. So when it came to my wedding, I just had to remind my mom that hey, sorry, we're keeping it small. Uh, it was difficult on my mom also. Really? It was that difficult chat. She's like, huh, like, cannot let that, then you invite yourself. I cannot, like, be the one inviting. I miss out, then it looks like her, you know, because my mom is the youngest of her gigantic family tree as well. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I invite myself. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, I've always seen those same uncles and aunties at other people's wedding, right? During the, the really, it's always that speech, like, you know, that speech or when they play games or whatnot, and then the bride's crying, the groom is crying, and then they're behind just laughing, ah, 
ah, on the inside joke, then they want to yum sing, you know? Especially if you're a wedding guest, lah, guys. It's like part of the wedding. If not, just tell them you cannot make it. Yeah, but I think sometimes the same thing is also that if the, the wedding has no programming, you also feel like I'm just a guest. It's you true, know? it's true. Yeah, then it's also not your fault lah that you're not participating because some Correct. weddings are just more simple Correct. and they're just dead invited to eat lor. I don't want to say like, oh, y'all, y'all must do a programming. But I do want to say this though. You are going to risk about thirty to $50,000 worth of capital to host the banquet. Where possible, right? Learn some programming. <laughs> The programming doesn't need to be your single friend and whatnot. It's yeah. like the bride and groom play a game is a programming, you know? Like put some lucky draw at the end, you don't need to provide the price or so. Tell everybody put in another $10, right? Then you just give it to that person. Yeah, I suppose to sit there and eat, right? Then I just stand up. Then I sit, sit down, down. Eat. Stand up. Then stand up. Then I sit down. Then go up, show your hand, then go home. You know what I mean? Then you feel like wow. Okay, and that leads us to the next tip, which is to plan at least one year ahead. With the guest list, I uh, know this, uh, especially because you're going to invite very early, mm. expect about 5% of people cannot make it. It's not the people that will say no to you. It's the people that say they cannot make it uh, between 3 to 5 days before your wedding. Not say it's excuses. I mean like legit one. Like yeah, for work, come. for whatever. They forgot or whatever, right? And yeah. if you are hosting your wedding during a season where you know everybody's going on holiday, I think you should tell even earlier. It allows you to have a lot of the dates you want mm. at a much better price. At least one year ahead. Mm. Because the hotels or the banquets or the restaurants, they want to lock in one year early. One. You get a lot of things cheaper. It allows you, right, to Shopee slash Taobao. Mm. A lot of things and then let them slowly ship to you from China or take more and a half months. Even the wedding gown, even the bridesmaid gown, yeah. even the suit you can buy to alter in yeah. Singapore. And also, right, food when you pick the location, <laughs> the food tasting is important. But well, it doesn't work for us. Like, in Singapore, when you food taste, you can only tell them almost or less or change. Yeah, actually, I don't think they care one. Eh. I yeah, don't think they, they care don't. because they're going to mess. Do they're going to write everything down. Oh, more salt. Is it yes? Okay. It's also, just a Certainly. Then they scrap the whole... F- they take the paper and then throw inside the dustbin. <laughs> but anyways, I just want to say, right, you say so much about planning, planning, planning. How much did you plan the wedding, you think? I think I did the last <laughs> three, months. three, six months sprint. Detour, pet, solo, all the major things of the wedding. But where I came in was when the entourage was involved. Yeah. Did you see how solid entourage was on that day? It was... Yeah. The video. Yeah, the, all the videos uh, I did. Mm. The creative matters. Yes. The programming and the games that we played. Mm. Mm, the fact that audience member cry. Mm. Programming. That leads us to number four. four. Things that we did in our programming that you might want to consider. So the first one was we were very clear that we didn't want a second margin. When I go to some weddings, right, and it's time for the bride to go up and change. I always wonder, why does it take so long? And then I realised that when my friends started getting married and I go behind the scene of what happened, right? The bride is very tired. The groom also very tired. So they end up sitting at the couch. They do their makeup, do their hair, change the gown, very tired. You know? Then I realised that, hey, actually I don't need that. Mm. I want to be where my friends and family are and let them, you know, talk to me yeah. since they're there for us. I think you picture the fact, and I remember feeling this way. And someone was asking me, how are you feeling like on the day of my wedding, right? And then I remember our wedding mass is like 9, 10 a.m. that kind of one. And my answer to them was, I feel very paise. I feel very, I feel bad. I feel very bad that I'm making uh, 100 people wake up so early to come to this part of Singapore to watch me go down the aisle. Yeah, and because we feel this paise right? And also part of it is we do one. We didn't do gate crash. Yes. Like why, why I didn't want to do it is because I don't want, right, by the time my husband come in to kiss me, he's sweating and like his, his shirt is stained with sweat. To be honest, I really wouldn't have minded. I thought it was really fun. I, I think it's more of a thing that I didn't want to impose on my, my yeah. entourage also. Because I feel that the first time you meet me, I want you to have that feeling that, you know, wow, I'm going to marry her in the church. Yeah. And yeah. so we, I've never, I didn't see her gown until mm. she appeared at the aisle. And that, that helps uh, with the tears. <laughs> But actually, that was not what made me tear. What made me tear was her father face. Oh. When I see the father, like, <laughs> wow, I let go. So picture this, right? The wedding banquet is 
everyone spending a lot of money, taking a lot of risk, few hundred people coming in here. I think where we come from, right, we thought like the least we should do is to hang out with them. But once again, it depends, right? Sometimes the dress and parading the dress means a lot to the bride and whatnot. But for us, I think we made a really conscious decision not to do the second march in. So we do one march in in the evening gown. We stayed the night, ate the very expensive and delicious food that we paid for. And then we mingle with everybody. We also didn't do table to table photo taking. Correct. <laughs> because we feel that like, hey, it's already such a free and easy. Uh, we are always there already. Yeah. Then if we go to your table and talk to you, then we take the photo. You we see, uh, almost every Chinese wedding, right? You got you got to take photo of the bride and go, who post? Who post? Who post on their feet? No have. At most you can have IG story best. At best. <laughs> then you know there's no time, right? And we've been married for a long time. Right? There's no time where we like. Let's open the album to see who come to our wedding. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what we did, we had a very good MC, Mr. Boo, tell everyone that we'll just be around for photo taking. Mm. And then we just go and say hi to everybody and then at some point a line form lah. Okay, and with the point of programming, one of the most important things is find a very good and reliable wedding coordinator. Mm. That friend that will make the decision for you on the fly. Bring the bride and groom that night, you are still needed here and there. What you end up doing, right, is you either rage on that day and take it out on the people around you, or you end up having to trouble someone to settle it mm. on the spot, giving them all the instructions and nuances on the spot, and then making them feel like, huh? what's your groomsman doing? For mine, it was a, a mixture of my groomsmen, which I think they did really great. Um, Jackie, for example, right, was in charge of the, the tables, right? Apparently, we either under-provide the table or over-invite people. Jackie gave up his seat, then Jackie just whole night. He just walked around, which I'm very grateful for. And he didn't even tell me. He didn't even tell me until I think I asked him, like towards the end of the night, I'm like, hey, sit down and eat, eh? relax, eh? Then he's like, oh, I got no more table. <laughs> So another point is that communication with your event coordinator is very important lah because mm. I think we didn't make it clear to them that the extra table, usually in weddings right, there's always an extra table for safety precautions just in case there really there are too many guests or whatever mm. not. Yeah, we didn't make it clear to only open if at least half of the table is occupied. Yeah. Yeah. So I think halfway through we we heard from the banquet manager that they are going to open the table even though they see no one sitting down there. And then we got shocked like, then we say no of course not. Yeah, but that could be better communicated <laughs> Correct. with the event coordinator. And the last point is to do with AV. If it comes down to it and there's a budget constraint between videographer and photographer, right? We always recommend oh. drop the video. Take the photo. Take the photo. Because I think these are photos that you constantly post over the years until now we still look back at our photos and post. Mm. Uh, we do have videos also, but it's not something that you look back and watch again or like something you want to clip the front and later you use the middle, you know? And so the videos, uh, the photos were a lot more versatile. Before we end the video, right, I want to ask, do you regret doing a banquet? Yes. <laughs> really ah? Yeah, you bitch, I told you I don't want to so sad. Me so many times. And when he told me that he didn't want, I really tried to see if we can host it in a restaurant. But with the number of guest lists, no restaurant could take us. And no, this is already a size down guest list already. Leh. And I really couldn't cut any more people. Like, you know, our parents- It was not even about that. Me. It was way more expensive in a restaurant. Uh, it was okay. I think I budgeted quite okay. Our dinner, a Saturday dinner, the table was about 1000 And right now I go to weddings, shock of my life. I remember planning for the wedding. I keep telling Pat, can we not do the banquet? because we were also planning for our house. If we don't do it, we can still have a simple lunch right after church because we're Catholic, so we're gonna do it in church anyway. But my parents really wanted like a banquet dinner. On hindsight, she regrets the banquet, but on hindsight, I'm really glad we did the banquet because I feel like it was a really, really good time. And I, I remember at church, right, I was very nervous because it's early in the morning and then you haven't warm up, you haven't anything, right? So even seeing my bowels, my voice was shaky. Uh, but at night when you like feel like, ah, 60% of the day is over, 70% of the day is over, it became more light for me. I remember having a lot of fun in my wedding banquet. So we've come to the end of this video. We hope you all found it at least a bit useful. Um, but we have a very, very cliche advice, which is don't let the planning of the wedding ruin the marriage. You have a lifetime ahead of the both of you to plan for so many other things. There's gonna be like uh, your anniversary, then after that you're gonna give birth, have a kid, then there's- You a, might. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are gonna come up. As much as, as a girl, 
it is your dream wedding, you want it to be a dream wedding, it's the once in a lifetime and all, I feel that there must still be some sort of, some control to it lah. It cannot be bomb everything on the wedding and then like, when yeah. you, then you restart your life. It is going to be as memorable as it is for the two of you as much as you think it is one. Yes. It doesn't matter what you do for your friends and family because they are not going to remember it. Yes. So don't spend the extra money so that people can take that photo behind this very beautiful backdrop, have uh, whatever, right? And then at the end of the day, you feel that, hey, you did your part. You did! You <laughs> really did! But the money is gone. You ask yourself how many wedding favors you still keep. As much as you want to make it beautiful, and I'm sure you will, just have some control. The best parts of the wedding are not the expensive parts. I mean, unless you do it at like Sea Aquarium, because ah, the fish very memorable. <laughs> but and then, it's usually ah, the bride gonna you know, go out and sing a song, or the groom went out to sing a song, or you know, the speech was very touching, they cry. All these things all don't cost money. I remember, right, towards the end of the wedding, like, we were very high, right? because like, oh my god, everything we planned 99% went according to plan, everything we show. The next day we wake up, right, the feeling, ah, say, on the count of three, okay? Mm. One, two, three, Normal. loss. <laughs> it's just like, what? What, what now? There's no longevity to this one year planning one. So like, make a good one, but then like, don't overcommit. I, I feel that the most valuable thing that I paid was photography. Correct. I still look at the pictures like he said, right? We still post about it. And I really look back at the pictures and be like, hey, this is how I remind myself of the wedding, not anything else. Okay, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe. I think many of y'all watch this channel, but only like half of y'all subscribe. So, sorry. <laughs>